Hello. Today's video will be about two batteries that are still um, not at the expiry date. They expired in the third month of uh, 2029. They are genuine Duracell batteries. They have been used or left in a, in a device, in a portable um, organizer. And um, after spending um, I think more than, uh, than a year, probably two years, um, I was wondering what uh, is their current state. And I was surprised to find out that both of them had entirely um, gone uh, off, meaning that they do not supply any more any voltage. However, on closer inspection, it seems that <clears throat> it's even interesting because one of the batteries developed a particular behavior. And I will um, mention what that behavior is. When a battery is uh, spending uh, so much time being connected in a circuit, it will clearly reach uh, its end of life, meaning that the supplied voltage goes to zero. However, under some circumstances and probably due to manufacturing uh, process variabilities, it can also go um, towards inverse polarity. This means that instead of having the positive end uh, still supplying um, voltage and uh, the negative one also doing so, they are going to have the um, polarities reversed, meaning that the battery will supply some voltage, but that one is going to be positive on the negative end and negative on the positive end. You may be uh, surprised how this may happen. However, the chemical reactions that occur in a battery can under some circumstances, and of course due to uh, the intense degradation of um, the internal battery's construction, can lead to reverse polarity. There is a whole sort of uh, documentation that has been um, created for this uh, phenomenon. It's nothing new, however it's interesting when it happens. And you may wonder why I want to show you this. Because it's a free scenario that uh, you may never encounter. Well, it's interesting because the behavior of just these two batteries, these two cells, if you want to consider them as such, occurs also on uh, large uh, battery sets. And this may uh, occur, for instance, in a lithium-ion or lithium polymer battery that may be uh, in your uh, laptop, in your um, uh, tablet phone or just about any sort of other device that uses a rechargeable battery. And this uh, may occur also on uh, nickel metal hydride batteries that are used in so many devices. So just about any um, um, portable energy source can have this issue. And it may seem um, uh, far-fetched or uh, unnecessary. I mean, what can happen if the polarity goes um, towards uh, the reverse state? Well, it matters a lot because it represents a parasite load. And this parasite load has first to be, uh, needs to be overcome by uh, the other batteries in the set. And uh, this means that they will be additionally stressed um, before uh, the battery that um, has this um, behavior is going to reverse to the normal situation. And this matters because it means that all the other batteries in the set are going to have an additional stress, and this means that they will have a reduced life. Um, of course, uh, this may happen only up to the level that uh, the battery uh, charges slower, and this means that it's a load, but it's not a load that could affect so much the other batteries. But in this case, it's even more important because um, lithium-ion batteries are even more uh, prone to be damaged if they reverse polarity. And having a, a cell that uh, done so in a set is clearly going to affect the others. Um, however, there is a very important note. This can happen only if a battery spends so much time in a device after it was entirely discharged. But this may happen with uh, devices that uh, spend so much time in storage or uh, due to various other reasons they have not received a, a recent uh, charging. Which means that there are additional um, issues that can happen with uh, this situation. 
All right. Um, perhaps I was a bit too um, detailed in the explanation I have given and uh, offering no background to them. All right. So uh, let me show you exactly what happens. So I'm going to switch to the voltage range and let's see what those batteries are actually delivering right now after spending so much time in a device. Um, I may have only a slight complaint about the fact that one of them exhibited this situation, though I'm not entirely sure how um, frequent it uh, occurs. Alright, so uh, let's see what voltage this battery supplies. 2 or 3 millivolts. This is actually a very low... Uh, 2 or 3 uh, tenths of millivolts, sorry. Okay, so 20 millivolts around that. And this one supplies around 20 millivolts. But you have noticed something. This one was showing with uh, the minus sign, which means that the polarity was reversed. It's almost the same amount of power, but uh, the same amount of voltage, but it's being uh, released uh, with uh, opposite polarity. Uh, of course, in a large um, battery set or a large number of cells, this will not have uh, such a high influence because it will probably be more or less balanced with uh, the positive voltage or the normal voltage that is uh, offered or uh, the um, energy that is being supplied by the other batteries but with uh, normal polarity. But then again, think about it. It's 20 millivolts but reverse polarity. Okay, so this can happen, and as you can see, this is how it behaves. Let's see how much current is being provided. I'm expecting the amount of current to be very low, because batteries that have been uh, mostly uh, drained of all their uh, uh, energy will probably release something uh, in the range of um, uh, tens of milliamps at most. When compared, uh, when you are thinking about a new battery, you would see probably four amps or even more if the battery uh, manufacturing uh, process actually allows. So let's see now. Now if uh, they provide at least um, I don't know a millivolt, a millivolt, a milliamp. Sorry. Okay. So as you can see, probably they um, offer even less. Um, current than this. So probably we are going to the microamps range. And um, yes, this is surprising in some uh, aspects. Okay, so the better the multimeter sensitivity can't even provide an information about uh, the maximum delivered current. Well, this is a bit surprising, but we may have a solution to uh, this. I'm not entirely sure if it will work, but we will see. Okay, so 163 milliamps, but this is the battery that was uh, still having some uh, residual voltage. So this was one of the batteries that was still uh, normally operating. So as you can see, I have used the reverse voltage, I'm putting it uh, in normal, and you can see that the polarity actually shows that the battery is still working. So, the battery that uh, went towards having the reverse polarity, and this is clearly the one, as you will see, I have put the polarity correctly, okay, and you can see that consistently it offers around, uh, it hovers at around uh, uh, 20 milliamps, when I'm going to try and make a measurement in the microamps range. Oh, I saw just a blip of probably 2 microamps. So it's not going to affect in any meaningful way what happens. However, it's going to be a drain that it may be slightly more difficult to overcome if this was a battery that was um, in um, a set, in an array, and it had to be uh, charged. So, um, I don't think that this battery poses any serious uh, danger, even if it went um, bad and it uh, exhibits uh, reverse polarity behavior, because the amount of current it supplies uh, cannot be in any sort of way uh, meaningful. I mean, it will probably be balanced by another battery 
uh, with which it may be in parallel. If it is in series, then probably uh, is not going to have um, a major impact as well. And we will also show what happens in this circumstance. I am uh, using the standard way to connect these batteries. And let's see what happens. Um, even if those values fluctuate, you have to understand the fact that uh, my body might be uh, creating uh, capacitive um, coupling, and this is the reason why you see all these values changing. All right, so let's see. 4.1 millivolts, and as you can see, it's in the normal polarity. So it's not going to have any sort of 40, um, no, for um, 0 0.4, sorry. Yes, 4 milliamps. Um, so it's not going to have any sort of meaningful um, way of affecting your device just because one of the batteries went uh, in reverse polarity. However, I'm expecting that in um, rechargeable battery array this to have a different uh, behavior. And in case you are wondering if uh, one of the batteries really show reverse polarity, I'm going to show you that it's not a measurement um, error. Okay, so this one clearly shows around 29 milliamps uh, in reverse polarity. So, okay, let's uh, use another multimeter, an analog multimeter that I will showcase on another occasion. And let's see what happens. I will place the device on the um, 5, uh, 0.5 uh, volts range, which means 500 millivolts, and I'm entirely sure I'm going to notice the needle moving uh, back. Let's see. Okay, so clearly it's not a measurement mistake. When I'm um, reversing the polarity, just a moment. Okay, it's clearly uh, it's clear that there is uh, deflection and probably it gets to what can be read as uh, around uh, 20 millivolts. So it's clearly a difference between one battery and the other. Okay, and you can see this one still supplying uh, less than um, 50, 50 millivolts as around 20 something Anyway, I'm not expecting the, um, the multimeter to have very good accuracy and there is also the issue of not uh, seeing right on uh, the needle. So there are uh, many inaccuracies that actually uh, compound in this circumstance. But as you have clearly noticed, there is reverse polarity on um, the battery that was initially um, tested. So one of these batteries actually exhibit reverse polarity. So it can happen, it's not going to have a highly meaningful uh, impact, particularly in the case of alkaline batteries, but in rechargeable batteries it may have uh, an impact because um, the whole set is going to be much more stressed when uh, charging. And I'm expecting this behavior to actually increase as the um, battery set is going to expand uh, its uh, service life. So probably what you can see only in passing may be an occurrence that um, happens more and more frequently as the battery uh, ages. So this is good to know. Uh, this is the technology we are using today and probably the one that will be probably will be used uh, some decades uh, in the future as well. Is the same amount, is the same type of um, energy source that is used in so many devices, so many portable devices, whether we are talking about ones that are extremely small, I don't know, like um, a smartwatch, or we are going to ones that are as large as um, a, um, a car or a train, and so on. So there, uh, uh, there is obviously a lot of understanding and a lot of... Um, um, thought that has to be placed when designing both uh, charging and uh, discharging circuits as well as uh, the batteries themselves. So it's a technology that is highly 
um, highly complex and it has to be carried um, at a very high level of uh, knowledge. All right, so I hope you found this video interesting and uh, thank you very much for watching.